What's up guys, Duster McDangles back here with another video. Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we are going to be covering and recapping the game three between the Toronto Maple Leafs and Tampa Bay Lightning. And man, oh man, what a game it was. Super excited to dive into this one. But before we do, if you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button too if you guys have been enjoying these videos as well as it does help out the channel. If you want to help grow the channel, hit that like button. It'll get out to more people. So really do appreciate the love and support you guys have been showing the channel as well. But without further ado, let's get into game three with the breakdown. And then we'll also talk about my game four predictions and watch this one live. Very exciting game. First period 2-2 right off the hop. And it, I mean, this game lived up to all expectations. So I was really happy about this one in Tampa. I thought Tampa came out pretty well. Uh, obviously a back and forth game with the, the scoring in the first period. Austin Matthews finally getting on the board in the playoffs. Nola Chari also chipping in. Sorelli Hagel as well in the first. Went through second period. Radish got the lightning on the board. And then in the third, Ryan O'Reilly was able to tie it up in the dying moments of the game. And then in overtime, Morgan Riley able to get it done for the Toronto Maple Leafs who were getting outplayed badly in overtime find a way to sneak out of Tampa well at least game the first game in Tampa with a 2-1 series lead looking at team stats lightning heavily outshot Toronto 39-27 honestly my thought on the game is the the Maple Leafs are lucky they won this they were heavily outplayed I thought throughout the entire game kind of staying in it and they were able to squeak it out and sometimes in the playoffs that's exactly what you need to do if you want to win some playoff games you're not going to have it at your best every single night and they didn't tonight but they were able to sneak out of there with a win power plays both teams over three hits 62 61 there's that massive scramble play after Morgan Riley who should have gotten a five minute major on Braden Point um, Matthews getting his first fighting major ever fighting Stamkos so just a massive just brawl uh, ensuing after that hit which was pretty crazy kind of opened the game up and a lot more hits were being thrown after that point uh, blocks 26-15 for the Maple Leafs and then only giveaways or 9-7 actually in favor of the Leafs with only seven giveaways looking at team stats um, Marner with two assists on the day. Nylander getting an assist. O'Reilly, who I think was probably the Leafs, one of their best forwards of the night. One goals, two assists. Nyes also played very well. He had a couple of chances to put the puck in the back of the net for his first ever playoff goal, but he looked very good. Young Croak looked good. Marner, obviously, two assists. Kerfoot, a little quiet, was also minus two on the night. Uh, Achari, this is really one of the first games we really saw him perform at a level maybe above of what he normally does. Uh, Nylander, a little quiet tonight, but he did have technically sh seven shots on goal, just not able to find the back of the net. Um, other than that, when it comes to blocks, pretty solid throughout all the forwards. Three blocks for O'Reilly, three hits for him as well. Nine hits for Achari, six for Aston Reese, four for Young Croak. Um, potentially, I know the cross-checking from Lafferty, um, I believe that was in the third period on, oh, I'm drawing a blank on his name off the top of my head, I gotta look, Colton in the face, he potentially could get a one-game suspension for that, or at least fined for the cross-check chop to the face. On the back end, Morgan Riley, obviously the game-winning goal, um, able to get it done on the back end for them. Uh, Giordano had another good game uh, for his standards, I think, going above of what he is Right now, uh, three blocks for Shen, two for Hall, hits six, six for McCabe, four for Riley. I mean, overall, their defense, I thought, played very well because they were in their end so much. TJ Brody on the ice, 32-12. That's insane. 28-01 for McCabe, 28-14 for Morgan Riley. So they were playing a lot in their D zone, and they were able to get the job done. Sam Sonoff looked a little shaky in the first period. Uh, very shaky on the Radish goal. Uh, he just went down. Radish put it short side high. Just, I don't understand what he was doing on that play. But overall in the third period and in overtime, I thought Sam Sonoff really performed well, played above what he was doing throughout the game. And I think he was one of the key factors actually as to why the Leafs were able to win that game, keeping them in it with the amount of chances the Lightning had. Looking at the Lightning now, Perry on the board for another assist. Hagel 1-1. One Sorelli, one goal. Kucherov, one assist. Stamkos, one assist. Colton, one assist. Uh, minus two for Janot. Um, 11 hits for Janot, though. He was throwing the body around. Patrick Maroon with five hits. Corey Perry with four. 
Uh, Belmar only had two hits. Uh, ice time was 25 16 for Hagel, 24 52 for Braden Point. Even though he was injured, he still played a ton. Kucherov and Stamkos also getting a ton of ice time. And a player that has been a little quiet, I thought, so far these playoffs, who's normally a pretty good playoff performer, Kalorn. I thought he played very well. He got a lot of ice time, 23 37. He's still fast, even though he's a little bit older. He didn't get on the board goal wise, but he did chip in with an assist and I guess you can say he wasn't really throwing the body around, uh, but he did have two takeaways. He looked very good. He was all over the place in that game. On the defensive side of things, obviously the biggest thing of note, Hedman back in the lineup for the Lightning. I thought his presence on the ice made it a lot better, a lot easier, I thought, for the Tampa Bay Lightning being able to shut down Matthews, Marner, and those top players from being able to score some goals. Nylander, Tavares, him out there definitely gives Tampa a little bit more confidence. They are still missing. Um... Uh, drawing a blank on his name right now as it's not on the screen, but Bogosian was in the lineup. He pretty much did nothing for 13.45, and they only registered him with one hit. He was definitely throwing the body around a little bit more than that. Ian Cole minus two, Perbix minus one, Sergachev minus one. Again, their, their defense, again, throwing the body around a couple of players with four hits, a bunch of players with block shots, Sergachev five, Hedman with three um, giveaways, although... Hedman did have three. Between the pipes, Vasilevsky, I thought he played well, um, just unable to get the job done. And this is only the third time in his career after a loss that he has also lost again. So I don't expect that to be the case in the next game. If the Lightning play like they did tonight, they just need to build upon that a little bit more, maybe get some more um, offensive output from Kucherov, Stamkos, and Point. Who knows how injured Point will be and how banged up he will be and if that will affect the way he does play. Who knows? But I think if the Lightning can keep up what they did and maybe if Vasilevsky can have a good bounce back game, I expect the Tampa Bay Lightning to take game number four. Although if the Leafs can continue to throw the body around, I mean, 62 hits, they out hit the Lightning. If they can continue to do that, get some offensive output. They need to do a little bit better job on the defensive side of things as well as the giveaways. I know they only had seven in the game, uh, but just making smarter plays, and if they can get the puck in the back of the net with their top players maybe stepping up and finding a way to get in their playoff form, Matthews, Martyr, and Nylander. Specifically, the Leafs could walk away in this series. But prediction for game four, I do have the Lightning. They're not going to lose twice on home ice. I think the Lightning will win the next game. It will be a 5-2 victory. I don't think the Leafs will be ready for them in game number four. Hedman back as well, which will, I think, help the Lightning continue to gain that momentum and confidence with him on the ice. But let me know what your guys' thoughts were on game three down below in the comments, as well as your comments moving forward for your predictions, X-Factors, and top performers that you think will show up in game number four down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like. If you guys are new, hit that subscribe button. But that's going to be it for today's episode. I hope you guys have a good one. And as always, stay dusty.